Hi everybody, Andrew from Polo Reef here. In this episode, we're gonna focus and highlight probably the best investment I've ever made, Dr. Alex Hall, AKA the Reef Vet. He has transformed Polo Reef. Just to give you a few examples, he finds pests in corals and examines corals that, that we would have missed. He scrapes our fish and we can actually quarantine fish without meds and he can clear them, particularly sensitive fish. He treats my koi and injects them with antibiotics and takes care of their flukes. This guy is a wonder man. Without him, I don't think we would be able to operate this glorious place. Please enjoy this video and don't forget to like and subscribe. Alex came in for his weekly visit to Polo Reef. He began his morning routine by checking the quarantine tanks. He noticed that one of the butterfly angelfish was swimming a little strange. This caught his eye and he immediately went into rescue mode. You try and catch it? Yeah, no, he was, he was flopping around. He wasn't gonna live. He's dead. Yeah, he's not dead. Yeltsin and Alex brought the fish over to Andrew to break the sad news. What is that? The butterfly. The we butterfly? Try, yeah, we try to catch it. Huh? You get the screw and then he's having a heart attack. He had a heart attack? Potentially, or he came in on it. Yeah. Or sometimes yeah. it's just there present, and, you know, he's stressed for whatever reason. What are we gonna do? Watch for anyone who has symptoms. I already have medications on standby. You see a symptom regardless of what it is. There's another butterfly that, that had a skin thing. Yeah, we can scrape him. We can scrape him right now and see if it's the same thing. Okay. Butterfly fish are susceptible to many different issues and can pass away rather quickly. This can contaminate the water. Can you tell whether it's internal or external? This so looks I'm, a little I'm gonna do an I'm gonna do a necropsy on him. So this is under the scale right now. Right. So I'm going to scrape. If they go under the scale, I'm gonna actually do a full necropsy on him. Did you see the is other one that looked a little strange? The skin. I haven't seen that one yet. Okay. But just because I've touched him, I don't want to touch anybody else. Okay. Okay. Polo Reef does not take fish death lightly. Andrew is concerned and launches an investigation. It's a really hard judgment call on, you know, do we go all hands on deck? Do we step back and see, does anybody else get it? If anyone else gets it, then we go, okay, do we get more aggressive? Is this just a one-off? Is he just stressed? Alex gets right to work. He carefully examines and scrapes the fish to get to the bottom of the issue. What caused this fish to die? It's a pretty extensive infection where there was several hundred parasites per you know, high power field. Um, in terms of what we're gonna do now is just to make sure that there's no other secondary infection, no other parasites. Alex begins by grabbing his equipment. He uses medical tools that you might find in a doctor's office. He sterilizes his equipment first to avoid any sort of contamination. I'm gonna sterilize the outside so that if I see anything on the inside, we know that the infection, you know, didn't just get contaminated from the outside. This process is very delicate and Alex has to take extra care to not destroy any of the samples. Remove the layer of skin without damaging the muscle underneath because I don't want us to have any artificial hemorrhage or any iatrogenic hemorrhages. Alex takes the sample for a closer look through a high powered microscope. He's looking to determine a cause of death. So if you're looking here, so this was the bruising that you guys were seeing. Yep. I haven't found any in the gills. I haven't found any in the liver. So the best time to do a necropsy is- Right now, right? Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I'd like to, you know, get, keep going systematically. Keep going. He continues the biopsy by carefully removing the intestinal tract and the stomach. Normally, this takes a lot of time, but Alex, he's one of the best and he can perform this procedure quickly. This can help determine a root cause of death and get to a solution quicker. So I took a deep biopsy of the muscle. So that's what's under there right now. I can put on the polo camera. 
Alex uses the Polo Reef camera to attach to his microscope to record the findings. I'm not finding any indication that the infection started on the inside. Again, the worst trauma was on the outside and we're getting invasion into the muscle. So it's not like it came, not, didn't find it in the digestive tract, didn't find it in the liver, didn't find it in the gills. This is great news for the Polo Reef team. See how that's all moving? That's not a parasite. Those are parasites. Yeah, so those are all dead. The rest of the Polo Reef team is curious and stops in to see what's going on. What do we got? This was an internal infection, then it's all external. Is there an infection comes from what? Should we be separated? I would. Let me do him first because I don't yeah. want to contaminate and start moving. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then get the other guys who potentially have it and then take it from there. And then they get into the debate of we don't know what we're treating. Do you scale scrape and risk death or do you treat and risk death and treat, you know, missing your diagnosis? Um, so again, I think it will talk, especially, like, talk, especially with the more expensive fish, and we have to go through, you know, risks and reward. It's a hard call, especially when there's expensive fish because you don't want to kill them from the exam. It's important to diagnose and treat quickly to avoid further contamination. A $15,000 fish passed away today. Alex wastes no time to get to the bottom of it. We lost one of these deep water antheas. So I would start with a exam of the surface, surface scales before I touch the microscopy or anything like that. There's been damage to the tail. You know, is that bacterial? Is that due to trauma? Is that secondary bacterial due to trauma? Alex takes three steps to examine the surface of the fish. Step one is to scrape the fish. Step two, he looks at it under the high powered microscope. And step three, he slowly examines the sample for anything that might stand out. So right now those are just the scales. I'm looking for any ectoparasites or parasites that are on the scales. I need to cut that further. Luckily, the first sample, it came back clean. Alex goes in for a deeper look. He decides to collect a sample of the fish skin. Using the same procedures, he examines it further for anything that might stand out. Nothing overly exciting yet. But you can see there's, you know, bacteria going through essentially around these gill fill up neck of months um, thin, thin, you know, architecture, but I can't get it. Alex is determined and he continues his search. So you can see it kind of looks like um, static. What that static is, is bacteria. Alex finally finds his cause of death. Got it. Hey, Dom. It's completely shocking. Take a look. There's a hook in his stomach. A hook? Look. Oh, so it's you not see us it? then? No, it's not you. All right, show that. Yeah. Alex quickly brings what he found to show Andrew. I'm assuming the way they caught him is if we look in his stomach. Which hand thing is this? This is the deep That's water. The, There's a hook in his stomach right there. A hook? There's an actual see it? hook. Nothing you could have done in a million years. The only thing would have been maybe an x ray, and we're not getting that out anyway. And the first for everything, right? I wasn't expecting to find that in him. Nothing we could have done. He dives back in to remove the hook. This is actually sticking out of his stomach. It perforated through his stomach. Andrew has built an exceptional team over the years. Alex is a great example of what it takes to run an aquarium of this size.
They go in the skeleton. They're hiding in the skeleton. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Like Summer weather can be tough for koi fish. Just like humans, they can get hot and stressed. Alex is going to investigate Polo Pond today to see how the koi fish are doing. Like anything else, he pays attention to detail. What we're doing now is we're just setting a sanding net just to move a population of them over to that side just so it's easier to catch. Alex will be scraping the koi, so he gets his tools ready. He enlists the help from Max to catch the fish. Using the net, Max can bring them up for Alex to perform his scrape of the skin. He'll have to do this a few times. So yeah, now just taking some of the mucus layer um, to see if there's any external parasites, but right now we're mainly looking for fluke. They were just treated two days ago for fluke. Um, we had about a 90% reduction, but the goal is 100%. Um, so now I'm just making sure that there's none here or at what level if they are still present. Alex has gotten to know which fish don't like to be tested. She tends to be a splasher. And most of the times I try to get the lateral and dorsal aspects of the fish. So I gotta wait for them to stop thrashing, otherwise they could potentially cut themselves on the slide. And I'm not looking for each individual fish to have fluke, but is there just fluke present in the pond? Alex will examine the samples for flukes. If they come back negative, no treatment is necessary. However, if there's a positive result, he'll need to treat the pond. So now I'm just scanning through the slide on low power objective. Um, the fluke are pretty easy to see. Um, you don't need a higher power objective or anything like that. This one's clear. The first sample was negative. He moves on to the next. He thinks he might've found something. So this is what we've been looking for. So it's species of fluke. I'm a mono GM, um, they cause irritation to the koi, especially in higher numbers, and they tend to proliferate pretty fast. Um, so I don't want to see any in the pond. And now the question is, how many other ones do we find? And so here we have one here, unfortunately. We were originally having about, you know, 50 fluke per fish. So again, the treatment's working, but again, just for their own well-being, I'd like them to have none. Um, so three fluke on three fish, out of 10. He walks over to break the news to Andrew. So three fish have one fluke each out of 10. So again, it's I'd like to treat one more time. Compared to we were seeing like 20, 30 per fish, we're down you know, 99%, but again, still want them completely gone. So the question is, do we treat with the flubendazole again, um, increase, you know, again, speculating that the pond may be 11,000, 11,500 gallons. Or do the fenbendazole. Or do we do the fenbendazole? I don't think there's a right answer. I would do the fenbendazole because yeah. it started to work last yeah. time. I'd be 100% down for that. I can order that and have it in the next couple days. In typical Alex fashion, he doesn't waste any time. He begins to formulate a treatment response. He understands the severity of the situation and acts accordingly. He heads out to the pond mixes the medication, and gets ready to spread it. I just use a thicker gauge needle just to stir it up. Inject the solution under the water line. Alex administers the medication right underneath the water line in direct flow of the pond. This will ensure it spreads to all the koi fish. Typically, I would expect to see results by tomorrow morning. Again, we don't know how long, you know, again, it could start working immediately. Um, but roughly, you know, 12, 24 hours. So we found a koi that had some abnormal masses 
um, in the mandibular area. Um, so today we did a fine needle aspirate as well as a bacterial culture just to rule out if there's a bacterial infection that's causing abscessation or if there's a mass-like lesion like squamous cell carcinoma. The fine needle aspirate's being sent to University of Miami. We're a board certified aquatic pathologist. We'll go through all the cells and see if there's any abnormal cellularity or any neoplasia present or if any there are any indications of abscessation um, and the bacterial culture will be sent out um, to the lab where it'll be grown in different antibiotics will be used to test against what bacteria possibly could be there. We should have the results of the antibiotic culture in about 72 hours and the fine needle aspirate could take a few days. Like everything else at Polo Reef, Andrew takes pride in providing the absolute best care for all of his fish. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Alex is so appreciated here and so needed. I bet you didn't know he also, besides fish and coral, he also does dogs and cats. And I'd like to let everybody know that he probably saved Phoebe's life by suggesting a bladder scan. And after finding the masses on the scans, Phoebe went for a bladder, intensive bladder surgery, and uh, she's recovering well. Um, it was benign, thank God, but they could have bled and, and killed her. So thank you so much, Alex, for all you do and all the care you give to our animals. But wait, guys. There's more. We are using experimental meds for coral diseases and fish diseases. And we have so much to bring to this hobby and for coral restoration. Please stay tuned as we develop these and we'll bring them to you. Hope you guys like this video. I know that you guys love to see the stuff in the back and the teamwork involved. If you like this content, please subscribe on our YouTube channel so we can bring you more of this content. Thank you very much. See you next week. <laughs>